Okay, now, behind me, I've written every single unit on the board, that's in, or every single topic that's in your biology course on the board. Okay, so what you can do when I step out of the way now in a second is you can pause this video, have a look at it. Every single teacher, every single set of notes is going to break up the actual chapters differently. But in terms of the units, they actually stay the exact same. The content in them is the exact same. Okay, so these units here, we've got unit one and unit two. Fantastic, you can see I've put them in red. And then over here, we've got unit three. Okay, in terms of unit three, you can see straight away that that is way longer. There is way more topics, even some of the topics you're looking at here, human reproduction, plant reproduction, potentially tricky sort of stuff. Okay, you don't have to worry about that for now. You don't have to worry about that. So instantly, we're casting away half of that stuff here. We don't need it. And I don't mean that we're casting away half of our grade. Absolutely not. Okay, what we're actually casting away is that's actually going to be course B. This here is course A. Now, course A in itself, this stuff can be worth, no, sorry, is worth, if you elect to choose these questions, 80% of your grade. You can get 80% from just sitting in these, in these next five sessions from looking at this versus looking at this. So in this school, in the Dublin Academy of Education, as you know, we study SMART. We study exactly what comes up. We don't do any more like, uh, like delving into stuff that can't be examined. But also we focus on the big hitters. So what do I mean by that? I mean not every single one of these chapters comes up in the same amount of frequency. And not every single one of these chapters is worth the same percentage when it does come up. So I'm going to show you that. I've done all the work for that for you. So you just again have to invest in the strategy that we have proven time and time again works in this school. Okay, it's almost like a, if you've ever been um, I, I, one time I went to Disneyland and there was this Toy Story game and I, I was in this booth beside my girlfriend. We were shooting this, these guns at these targets. Now, I was shooting all these 10 point targets. I was getting loads of them and I got loads of like, 10 point targets. I thought I was doing very well. She was more methodical. She actually took her time and aimed for the 500 point targets and she only had to hit a couple of them and she absolutely annihilated my score. At the end, I thought I'd done loads of work, but I actually hadn't. I actually lost, I got destroyed in the game, and I actually never hear it, uh, live that down. And that's sort of the same with this sort of stuff here. I'm going to show you which one of these are the 500 point targets, and you just have to trust me. Okay, you just have to trust me on that. Okay, in terms of unit one uh, and unit two, this is what we're going to deal with over the next couple of days. Unit one is the most important thing by a good bit. If you let me show you what that exam looks like, this exam can't look anything, can't look any different from got me all handkerchief. You can't look any different from what I'm going to put on the board here. Every single year when they're, when they're constructing a biology exam, every single year it has to, without fail, look like this. Okay, there are three sections. Three sections. So they're called section A, B and C. Okay, so nothing big there. Section A, section B, section C. Now, because the majority of you will have done a mock, which is absolutely massively critical for you, okay, because you have done that, uh, you would already know there's section A, B, and C. What some people call this is the short questions and the long questions. That's simply not the case. That actually is not true, okay? I'm going to tell you that calling something the long questions is one of our myths of biology, okay? And you'll see why. Okay, in terms of section A, well, in section A, there's going to be six questions. And two of those questions in section A have to come from unit one. Okay? Two of those questions have to come from unit two. And two of those questions have to come from unit three. Fantastic. So you can kind of see straight away, we've got four out of six of these. On your Leaving Cert exam, you only have to answer five out of six. You get a choice. So we've actually got a lot of those in the bag for this course here. We can only miss out on one question. And let me let you in on something here as well. The stuff we do here preps us for Unit 3. You could probably answer one of these Unit 3 questions based on this sort of stuff here and give it a really, really good go. Okay? Of, the, of these questions here, we have to, have, have to answer five. Each one worth 20 marks. So 20 by 5, that gives us 100 marks. That's one quarter of our grade. So fantastic. Okay. So the whole exam itself is out of 400 marks. Section B is the experiments, okay? There are 23 experiments on the course. You have a handout speaking about them, but I'll speak about them in the next session a little bit more. But 23 experiments. These are not, absolutely not, 
anything like the write-up you would do for your teacher in school. Absolutely nothing like it. Look at all the past paper questions. You just have to generally understand the question. Never, ever does it say, write up this experiment. The fascinating thing about this is because there are 23, they're like, it's actually quite predictable about what's going to come up. And not so much because there's 23 experiments, that seems like a lot, but like four of them are food experiments, literally the junior cert ones. You know, four of them are enzyme experiments where they're all interconnected. So you can actually look at the topics that have come up over the last number of years and actually narrow this down even further. Okay, you can narrow it down even further for this part here. Now, of these questions, there are three. Okay, so there are three experiment questions, seven, eight, and nine on your exam. You only, you only have to answer two of them. So you can pick two out of those three questions. So if your predictions didn't go exactly to plan, well, you've got an option. Now, even better than that is of these three questions, they're usually almost always going to be on one experiment, then it's the second question on another experiment, and the third question is actually a mix. Okay, so the examiner does that to try to throw you, so you know loads of different experiments. But how it's actually worked out is that third, that mixed experiment question, is usually so straightforward because they can only really touch a, the kind of very, very top surface of that experiment. They can't go into any detail whatsoever. So if you do, have done any work whatsoever on the experiments, you should be able to do very well on that. Now, each one of these questions here is worth 30 marks each. Okay, you're gonna answer two of them. Absolutely nobody in any of my classes should be going for less than 52 on those experiments. Okay, and I'll explain to you why in, in a second. But that's how that part of the, the exam comes out. Section C, which people call the long questions, Definitely not long questions. People think long questions, long answers. No, okay, and we, we'll, we'll talk about that again as we go through. But section C, worth 240 marks. So we've got so far 100, we've got 60, and section C worth 240 marks. Okay, what's the story with that? Well, one of those questions, without doubt, no, like, not, not one word of a lie, like it has to, regardless of anything, one of those questions has to come from unit one, two of those questions have to come from unit two, and three of those questions from unit three. And then you're kind of saying, oh, unit three's come up again, that's a, that's a little bit annoying. It actually isn't, because if you look at what you have to answer here, in these questions, there are, there are, uh, there are six of them, you have to answer four out of those six questions. So you have a choice, okay, you have a choice of those questions. So you can see pretty, pretty much straight away how this course, going through what we're going to go through now, which is uh, these topics here, not that big a deal, I'm going to interconnect them for you, this is going to be worth 80% of your grade. And the actual skills you're going to learn in this, the questions that are going to actually apply your, you're going to apply to, to other chapters and to your study, is going to make it worth far more than that. Far more. In fact, the tactics I'm going to show you are basically the Dublin Academy of Education's success tactics for the last decade, and they can apply to absolutely every subject. In my opinion, every subject is the same. You have, to, you have to just ask yourself a number of questions and prepare yourself in a certain manner, and it's very, very easy. Again, you're going to run this program once, twice, maybe even three times, so this should be, you should be able to get this. You should be able to actually do this exam by the end of this in your sleep. Unit one here itself, you can see there's actually, there's three topics on it, three topics, but, but there isn't. There actually isn't three topics. Scientific method, it's in your notes. I'm not gonna discuss it. You have a read of it there in unit one, but it's only, it comes up every year for a certain number of marks. In 2019, it was 20 marks. So I think in 2020, it will be a little bit less. Uh, I, I'd say maybe around the nine mark. Now I can't say that for example, or for, for definite, but definitely have a read over the scientific method. Just make sure you understand words like hypothesis and stuff like that. It'll take you around seven minutes. So realistically, these are the two chapters here in unit one. These are the two chapters, food and ecology. And that's what we're gonna deal with today, food and ecology. Those two chapters alone, that a lot of people get bored of and they don't spend a specific amount of time on, especially ecology, it doesn't get given the time that is actually, it's worth in terms of the paper. Okay, those two chapters alone, if you look at this exam that I have up here, that's the way the exam has to be laid out. Those questions, those two chapters out of the possible 38 topics, they have to be these questions and they have to be this question. 
Okay, you have to be. So basically I'm saying unit one is worth 25% of your grade. 25%, okay? It could be worth even more if it's the experiments. It is absolutely critical you know unit one inside out. So this next, this video, these next, this next whatever hour that we have together is the most important in terms of bang for your book time for your leaving cert. Okay, so food and ecology. One of them has to be food, one of them has to be ecology, and pretty much always this is ecology, but I'm going to prepare you just in case a little bit of food comes into that as well. Really, really, really important. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to just tell you the rest of our plan going through it, and then we're going to, we're going to dive into food. So we're, we, we really want to get going with the biology, I'd say, at this, uh, at this stage. But in terms of unit two, my next basis, what we're going to deal with in the, in the next video, is we're going to look at photosynthesis and respiration together. Okay, and there, there's definitely reasons behind that. They'd be my next go-to idea in, ter in terms of that, respiration and photosynthesis. Okay, after that, we're going to look at enzymes. Now, the reason I haven't put enzymes up on the board until, until right now is because enzymes for me, they're not going to be massively important in terms of the, an actual physical question this year. However, they're going to be absolutely critical when it comes to this. Okay, so that's, that's really important. So then afterwards we're going to deal with this and we're going to fill in the rest of that information as we go towards the end of the week. Okay, uh, last thing before we get going is I just wanted to dispel a, to dispel a couple of myths here. Mocks, fantastic. I'd say you learn so much from your mocks. They are probably the most valuable tool that you will have going towards your leaving cert and you can sit another 11 if you want to. 11. Okay, you can sit another 15. Well, how do you do that, Dave? You can sit another 30. Okay, what you can do is you can actually go online and print off every past paper question or every past paper that there ever was. You can put yourself into a room, put yourself under exam conditions, go through a paper, time yourself. When, once your timer goes off, put your pen down and you can also print off the official marking scheme. The marking scheme that your, te that, your, that your examiner would have had that year. And then you can correct yourself. And I'm telling you, I know from experience, you would learn a hell of a lot more doing that than you would any study session, than you would any mock that you would have done in school. Because, you know, sometimes you do mocks in a rush and you're doing loads of other things. You don't get it back for a month and you can't even remember sitting it. Maybe you've crammed for it. So that is a really, really good tip that you could go ahead and do that. Okay. The other thing I would say about mocks is the mocks aren't made by the State Exams Commission. They're made by people who, again, it's good to have a look at them, who are trying to guess what's on the Leaving Cert, but very often there's mistakes in them. In fact, very often there's mistakes in the Leaving Cert, but very, very often there's mistakes in the mock. Maybe it gets a little bit too hard or a little bit too easy, or they word something in a certain way. Also, the marking scheme during the summer for you is going to change three or four times, comparing, depending on how people are doing across the country kind of really showing that the Leaving Cert is a comparison exam versus actually how good you are at biology, whereas the mocks don't change. So very often people don't do very well in the mocks.